All right, I think we are good. So thank you both of you all for coming tonight and looking forward to asynchronous interactions and comments after the fact. As we know, we're going to make this great session with Dr. Kashif Azdi on competency-based learning and assessment available in YouTube and linked to the Rollins College blog and also to the Dallas Learning and Technology Meetup group as well. So um, my name is Jeff um, and I, uh, Jeff Kissinger, and I teach and lead the Rollins College Instructional Design Certificate. Um, Amanda is actually, actually an alumni of that program. Um, she's currently a senior uh, learning and instructional designer that I'll let her introduce herself in a moment. Um, but tonight, um, I really want to, you know, get the two participants to uh, share uh, who they are and about themselves. And then I'll introduce our wonderful, illustrious guest speaker, Dr. Kashif Azdi. So uh, if, if you two would like to introduce yourselves, uh, what do you do currently um, and what do you hope to gain from tonight? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So again, I'm Salil Lime, and I'm uh, working in Dallas for a technology firm here called DXC Technology. So I'm not connected directly to the field of education, but I've always been interested. I've participated in South by Southwest EDU a couple of years ago. I uh, also try to follow a few blogs and in general, just interested in how people learn and how kids learn and how we can improve those areas. So looking forward to hearing from Dr. Kashyap. Great, thank you so much for coming and wonderful. Yeah, I, I went to the South by South, Southwest EDU for the first time in Austin. Actually, uh, it was wonderful. I, th I thought it was gonna be very sort of K-12 focused, um, but yeah. I think it, it was K-12, higher ed, and sort of workplace training as well. So I'm so glad that you came tonight. Welcome, thank you. And I am Amanda. Um, I work for a technology company <clears throat> that supports uh, the specialty pharmacy industry. And um, I basically am responsible for developing the materials used um, to help train new users on our software. And so um, I created a, a, a site um, using the Moodle LMS and um, have been diligently uh, working to populate that um, site with lots of good content, micro learning, that sort of thing, and assessments. So this should be very interesting because I can get some ideas on how to better assess our students' learning. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing your background. That is exciting. Um, as, we, as we continue on tonight, uh, I think that we'll, uh, Cash, if Dr. Azzi will probably go for about 30 minutes or so, but we're gonna keep it informal. We wanna keep it interactive. So if an idea pops into your head, by all means, if you wanna chat that, or if you wanna unmute your microphone and ask that question, that would be lovely. Um, a little bit about um, Kashif. Uh, he's a great friend and colleague. I've worked with him at Academic Partnerships for, let's say, going on a year. Um, and uh, we work with colleges and universities to help enable them uh, put their programs online. Uh, so uh, it's been exciting. And of course, uh, it's been wonderful working with Kashif and geeking out with him on, on everything from you know, online pedagogy to facilitation to his expertise, which are vast. But he certainly, I think, is an expert in competency-based learning, education, and assessment. So uh, without further ado, everybody, uh, this is Dr. Kashif Azdi, and this is on competency-based learning. Go ahead. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, hi, Salil and uh, Amanda. Thanks for joining. Um, let me share my screen real quick. And I believe you can see my screen. Yes, and we also see your notes. So okay. if which is fine. I mean, you, if you want to give us, you know, all the answers before the test, that, that's cool. Um, but, <laughs> but, but I think um, when, when you were shown it before, I think, Kashif, uh, I think that it was just the actual power. Okay. Let me stop sharing and I will stop the sh show. And now let me share my screen. And there. Yep, that, yep, yep, that's it, your desktop. Yep, perfect, perfect. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, so the topic, as you can see, um, demystifying competency-based learning. And it says a conversation. So uh, don't go by these slides because 
I just put them together just to give you like pointers, some um, uh, uh, so that our discussion can uh, can continue. But I would really like to see actually uh, what are your questions, what are your uh, interests in competency-based education, and uh, and we can have a conversation. Uh, that's the whole whole idea of this uh, this uh, session. Um, I'll just start with this and uh, and 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 see if uh, if you are uh, you are an adult learner, and 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 you you want your faculty or your courses or your instruction, which one actually would you prefer? So if you see at the top. The instruction it just teach through the middle. If your faculty is teaching um, for the uh, for the, in the bell curve, the middle of that uh, for uh, average student, which most of the universities and you know most of the faculty do that, uh, versus a, a more of a, a student centered um, uh, where it's about what students need to know and learn. Um, same thing about the receiving credits. Uh, would you prefer actually getting a passing grade and 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 certificate uh, a diploma versus you want actually to see that you have um, mastery of content? You can demonstrate that you can you you don't only know but you can do things uh, what what you learned. Then if you keep going on that, would you prefer that? Um, uh, there is like an age limit or uh, you have to sit in the class for 15 or 16 weeks and and complete a course versus you actually can demonstrate that you have learned the content and you can demonstrate that and upon mastery you can end the course. Um, last here is about uh, about assessment. How would you feel, and what should, would be your preference if there is a, an assessment end of the course, end of the year, end of the term, or whenever you, as a student, as a learner, ready to take the assessment? So, any any thoughts about uh, where you want to want to be? On the left side of this column, or the right? Yeah, or, definitely or, the right. I'm sorry, Amanda, say it again. Uh, definitely the right. And why? Why so? Um, well, because the the student is taking charge of um, the direction of the learning and moving at his or her pace, um, as opposed to following a a, a strict. Uh, regimen that um, because every learner is different you want to make custom your uh, learning um, for the individual learner as opposed to for the masses all right all right good Salil you have any thoughts yeah <clears throat> I agree I mean this just feels like teaching to the center or average is unfair to most students in the class right that are not exactly at that average level it's unfair to the person who's lower than the average because he can't catch up and the fast student probably is not challenged as much. Excellent. Good, good, good. Well, just to interject, Kesha, um, uh, what I like about what you put together here, and I've never, I've never thought of, you know, competency-based learning in sort of you know, in this continuum, but I like it because when you look at the top, you know, obviously, you know, we hear so much about it, you know, we're in the learner centered um, model, a learner centered, centered world, you know, uh, the ability as Amanda alluded to, to really let the learner self regulate at their own speed and pace and confidence, um, their learning and their progress. Um, and, you know, I think that most of the world higher ed, you know, uh, you know, K 12 and training, you know, is, is really starting to see that I think higher ed, you know, granted, this is where you and I are at. Um, I think that higher ed probably tends to be the most along in terms of that. Um, but um, I see, you know, K-12, especially with, with the virtual schools and things like that changing. And of course, you know, um, Amanda alluded to her, her knowledge network at her company. Um, so, you know, I think that 
all of these kind of culminate really in a learner centered approach, you know, mastery. It's not about seat time or age or these hard frameworks, you know, of the 20th century. Um, it's not about time. It's really agnostic of all those things. And it's very learner centered and really based on the, as, as, as uh, the folks alluded to today, their learning styles, their, 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 their confidence levels and things like that. So I like how you sort of frame this initial, you know, conversation because it's not necessarily, um, one or the other is kind of the continuum. Yep, yep. So that's actually, that's the key, and, and you probably already have figured this out. The, the right side is the competency-based. Um, and, and, or I would say, actually, I would caution to use and, and paint the whole thing with one brush, but there are some competency programs that don't do all of it, but they're not actually a well designed, in my eyes, well designed competency based programs. So, in order for actually, but there is a potential for competency based program where it is, it provides actually with, the, with focus on learner and learning. And, and what can students be able to do uh, with that? Uh, and it's, it's, it, it brings in more of your work experience, your knowledge as an adult, especially, you, you bring in actually at, at daily life, your personal and professional lives, you are learning, you are daily, uh, and so if you're in, in IT. Uh, I'm, I'm in an IT company, but uh, that's not my background. My background is more MBA, I'm on the, I've been on the business side. For business now. side, absolutely. Yeah. So you have been in actually the, the business side, and let's assume that you want to get an MBA from a traditional university. Traditional university will make you go through those semester long courses and would have, you have to sit actually for 15 week or if it's a seven week course, you have to go through that whole time period, that seat time. Yeah. And, and with your experience, you may already know actually what is strategic planning? What is actually accounting? What yeah. is uh, management? And if you can demonstrate um, that actually why you have to sit in the class for that long. Mm -hmm. So that's where actually the focus of the competency-based education is, is on learner. We, education meets learner where they are and it's, it's personalized and it makes actually it more relevant and engaging for the student. Um, moving on to actually just like I, I know you probably have seen lots of definitions and I just wanted to put it up here uh, just so that we have kind of a, a level set for uh, what is the definition and I put intentionally put actually US Department of Education um, because most of the crediting bodies they actually are under the uh, DOE Department of Education um, so you can see actually that in this, the key words here are flexibility, demonstrate mastery, and it's regardless of time, place, or pace. Keshav, um, you, did you push next on the screen because we're still seeing the, uh, the continuums? Uh, or maybe there's a lag. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I think there was a lag. Thank you, Keshav. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Yep, no problem. So we're talking about the green highlighted areas, the words, that's a critical part about competency. We just talked about flexibility. We allow actually students actually to have flexibility regardless of time, place, and, and their pace. Because I may take actually longer to take the same or demonstrate the same competency versus Salil, you or Amanda, in your case with health, uh, 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 the, the product that you're working currently and you have experience with. So I sh we should not hold each other back uh, in, in demonstrating those competencies. And, and I'm glad actually to see Department of Education actually is um, uh, coming uh, forth actually. Uh, I, the Ted Mitchell actually was an undersecretary. I met with him a couple of years ago. Uh, and he actually started a, a new initiative where actually uh, he was providing competency-based uh, outcomes-driven 
uh, education because accountability actually that's where accountability is in the department of education the dollars are going and where what what are these universities producing are they helping actually students to learn the skills that will help them to be successful in their personal and professional lives and then add to the community add to the society or are they just uh, 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 rote memorizing things or the it's a faculty driven curriculum where whatever faculty is thinking uh, uh, that needs to be taught um, they are trying to just teach that part from their perspective Kesha, I have a question um, so using Salil's example of uh, MBA or business background can you provide just sort of a, a high quality contrast of like of, of, a, of a really concrete example of a competency based assessment or module or or perspective in maybe a um, MBA and maybe a not example just to kind of give us sort of that framework as we go forward sure yeah no assessment actually that's where um, with an assessment actually where we, we get into the authentic assessment uh, that's where we provide uh, when, when we design actually competency based learning um, there, uh, and I'm going to get some help from my slides here real quick. Um, so in, in, in competency-based, uh, competencies are defined, and they are based on what the professional uh, competences are needed for the profession. For example, in MBA program, what are you able to do? What, what is the uh, industry's uh, uh, requirement or what are what are they looking for an MBA to be able to do and and when we define those outcomes or competencies they are taken from the, the industry they're taken from the education uh, literature they're taken from the standards uh, accrediting bodies uh, AACESP for example in this case for MBA they're creating body what are the standards? So that's where the competencies are defined. So assessment, authentic assessment actually is, is designed so that you are able to demonstrate those competencies that are needed in the corporate world. Uh, for example, you can learn about planning. You can learn about strategic planning. You can learn about risk management all day long. But if you cannot produce a plan, actual plan, you are not able to perform when you go out and, and, and work at any organization. So that's where the authentic assessment comes into play, where you are actually demonstrating that you are able to create this plan, the strategic plan that has components that will help you to uh, move forward with your, with your job or your project. So that's an, that's an example of an authentic assessment. That is real, real world assignment right. that you right. actually do or project that you do. A non-example would be that I have to write actually um, uh, answer a, 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 a multiple choice question which talks about strategic plan. What are the different components? And don't get me wrong, that is important but that is almost like a, a rote memorization that do i need do i know actually what are the different parts of uh, a project plan or when i actually write it down write, and create a plan that's where i'm using higher order thinking skills um, so that's where the, the the whole idea of actual authentic assessment comes into play it ties directly with the competencies or the outcomes Thank you, Kesha. Just to interject, just to see if I'm, a, I'm on the same page as you. So, you know, it's really a focus on examples might be project-based um, assessments, activities. Like you said, produce a plan, or produce a budget. In my world in education, I keep thinking about, you know, working with um, faculty in special education where, you know, uh, their graduate students might produce um, an individualized education plan or an ed leader program, an administrative program, they might produce um, um, a plan, or I'm sorry, a schedule, you know, a, mm -hmm. a class schedule or a school schedule or something like that. So real artifacts that are authentic, tangible examples of your ability to apply 
abstractions and concepts. So it's not talking about the learning, it's actually demonstrating and creating and doing. Um, yep. is, is, am I on target with you? Absolutely, absolutely. You, 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 you sell, said it so eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great. We've had another person join too. So welcome um, if you can hear us and, and uh, we're keeping this interactive. So by all means, um, as Dr. Asdi is going through uh, the, the uh, conversation tonight, by all means, if you have questions, you can chat them or um, unmute your microphone and ask us a question. Great. Uh, so um, let's actually, uh, while we're talking about, um, I'm, I'm just going to share a little bit about Again, we, we did talk about actually the, the benefits and why uh, CBE. And we looked at the benefits and, the, and we talked a little bit about that in the first slide too. Um, but it's, it's more actually, again, the Department of Education is saying that by enabling students to master skills at their own pace, this learning system help save both time and money. And and I believe it's more than time and money. It's, it's most of those things that it's, it's about flexibility. It's, it's a applicable. It's, it's, a, it's a, the practical application of the knowledge that we are learning and you apply that. And it, it is efficient learning where you are actually using your background uh, uh, knowledge skills and, and whatever you know already or you have demonstrated you are using that to build your knowledge. You're not starting from zero. Or otherwise, you will be getting bored, actually, if, uh, if you're using the same example as Salil's example. Um, if, you, if you have to redo your basic things um, that you already know, uh, you, you'll be bored. Uh, so there, are the, I'm not going to go over all of these uh, uh, because we are getting pretty close uh, on our uh, uh, time here, um, but uh, I would actually uh, say it's not just time and money, it's more than that. It's the user experience, it's the learner-centered uh, uh, design that helps with the uh, with CBE. Um, so th th there are actually currently um, the, the full spectrum of uh, CBE models, uh, and that is where um, they're the least flexible is that currently there's a course led program uh, where there are students have actually to take uh, courses in the class or online, uh, but there is no PLA, which is prior learning assessment um, or CBE. Um, and we have, um, I'm going to just move this uh, chat over. Great. Um, So examples, um, concrete examples that, that we might be able to connect with, whether it be schools, models, or, or anything else in terms of these different quadrants, Kasha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so a traditional university or a, a, a traditional school, um, which does not allow any prior learning assessment or any experience, it does not count towards that. That is the least flexible because you have to sit in through the classes, take entire curriculum, however many credits they're requiring, that's the least flexible. And the, the latest, which Department of Education have recently approved, like a couple years ago, is the other extreme, um, where actually uh, the direct assessment model, where it is student actually on their own, they actually make the progress, demonstrate competency, they can complete a course over the weekend. If they know the content and they can demonstrate that, they can actually complete the course over the weekend um, or, or, or whatever the time it takes for them to complete it. And then the other two actually, the, the, the consider as the most flexible. And, and this is actually taken, as you can see, taken from Kale, which is uh, an organization which helps with the uh, prior learning assessment. Um, so they actually, believe actually that the course based as well as the PLA, the prior learning assessment is the most flexible. And there's a lot of research that shows that actually if a student bring in the credits 
uh, into the program, the likelihood of them uh, uh, staying in the program and completing with the persistence is much higher. It's about 70% higher. And, and that's where uh, uh, the, the two are most flexible according to this grid. When you, say Trump, flexible, when you say flexible, are you referring uh, flexibility for the learner or um, is it the flexibility of the course? What it, what it, good, good question, Amanda. Yeah, this is flexibility for this, the student population. So this is based on the currently, the adult students, which is the most flexible as far as completing a degree program. It's not only one course, but as a degree program. So if in that bottom right uh, quadrant, yep. um, direct assessment, it says it's moderately flexible. It sounds though like that would be the, the most, most flexible. Flex yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, however, with the PLA, with the plus PLA in both those other quadrants, that's where um, they bring in actually PLA, which is like uh, the prior learning assessment. If I have actually worked somewhere um, and, 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 and I can bring in actually my portfolio, um, I'll get credits. I don't even need to take any tests or exams. So the, the current, eventually I agree with you, eventually this direct assessment would become actually the most flexible. Um, with, the, with, the, with the students who are starting fresh, who don't have any experience or any, um, uh, any prior uh, learning ass uh, assessment. So that will actually eventually become, direct assessment will become an opportunity for those students to be able to take the assessment and move on, take the assessment and move on, versus the other two quadrants where it's hybrid CBE or course-based, plus PLA, that's where the prior learning assessment actually currently will help them as a program to knock off some of the courses and credits that are needed for completing the degree program. Okay, so it's more flexible because you don't necessarily have to take all of the courses, whereas in that bottom right corner, you always have to take all of those courses. Correct. Okay. Yep. Uh, Dr. Kashif, can you just explain what is PLA exactly? Yeah, it's prior, it stands for prior learning assessment. Okay. And there are many different ways. This just like in college, you can actually clap. Uh, there's a clap out. Uh, you can take a test and you can clap. Uh, but PLA actually is mostly about um, the, uh, your, you create a portfolio, which can demonstrate, for example, the competencies for your program are that you are able to do a budget. You are able to do a project plan. Um, if you can bring in those examples and share, then the PLA, the, the university you're applying, they can give you credit for those two competencies or the courses related to those competencies. So you're saying if I'm an accountant, then I've already done a lot of the accounting uh, advanced techniques or whatever at work, I can just bring that in work experience and I can get credit for accounting and not have to worry about that assessment. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. then on the top right side, they also do course based, meaning you still have to sit through courses in addition to PLA. How, how does that work? So no, but the, the right top corner is the, is a model where there are the program is course based program. So okay. Any, and then the bottom left is, is a competency-based uh, 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 program where there are the, the it's, uh, uh, it's a competency-driven and competency-based program versus a course-based at the right top corner. So an example would be for the course-based, um, like Capella, for example, they have uh, a one part which is called a guided path, which is a regular course-based. If you are doing your master, you usually have to take 12 courses. But they are competency-based, but they're course-driven. You have to complete those courses. Okay. So that's one model in the right top corner. The lower left corner is where it is more of like a based on a, a competency. Uh, and, and an example would be 
uh, Western Governors University or uh, Southern New Hampshire. Um, they have a College for America. They have actually, they don't have courses, they have competencies, list of competencies. And then you actually have to take those competencies in order to earn your degree program. Got it. So the, <laughs> the CBE part on the bottom left, Dr. Yep. Kashif, that's basically just a direct assessment, right? That's the direct assessment part. And then on top of that, you can also get um, credit for PLA. Correct. And it could be um, there, there, there are still modules for that competency. There's still some instruction provided uh, for the lower left, the hybrid CBE plus PLA. So they, they still exist that, uh, that uh, but the, the unit of course, if you will, is at a competency level. Got it. Yeah. Good, good questions. I have a question, Kashif. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, instructional design, you know, whether, whether you're coming from sort of the workplace training or you're the senior knowledge, you know, e-learning, you know, and designer, or if you're in a K-12 environment and you're, you're an instructional technologist and doing some kind of instructional design, of course, in higher ed, if you're working with faculty in our world, you know, from an instructional designer's decision-making and thinking, um, how might this come into play um, if they, if, and, and what would be valuable maybe in terms of exploring more CBE applications within those different um, domains and sort of the instructional design thinking? Yeah. So um, if I understand your question correctly, um, you are uh, asking what is the implication of uh, what CBE for an instructional designer? Yeah. So how would, how yeah, would instructional yeah. designer think? Yeah, I, I, you know, in terms of, you know, when, when we sit down and we work with uh, a subject matter expert or a faculty member or a teacher, you know, we're really uh, trying to create you know, some kind of outcome or, you know, opportunity for our learners to perform. So from a CBE perspective, how might this be different from more traditional um, yep. instructional design work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the, the traditional instructional design, um, as we know, it still is most of the time the, it's faculty slash textbook driven. It's, it's still actually um, the faculty because instructional designers, when they're designing a course, an academic course, um, they're still actually relying on faculty for the subject matter. So they, the, the, the distinction for CBE, which adds actually value to instructional designer is, is the mapping and the alignment. So that in, in, in competency-based education, Alignment is the key. It's the backbone. So by alignment, I mean from what are the outcomes or competencies? How are we going to assess? How are students going to demonstrate those, assess, uh, those competencies through assessment? And then how do we support students with the learning resources uh, to that so that they can, we can help them to learn those competencies and demonstrate them successfully? So everything has to be aligned. So in, in when you're designing actually a, 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 a traditional course, it's still actually a, a, a content driven usually where you are working with the content and chapter by chapter from the books and whatever the objectives are for a learning objective for the, that chapter, that's what you are designing your assessment around uh, and, and the learning around. So it, 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 the, the slight difference, there are lots of parallel. Uh, there's still alignment in a traditional instructional designer when they're working with the traditional faculty. There's still alignment there, but that alignment is from the contents perspective versus in the competency-based education, it's more from what are the uh, uh, outcomes? What are the, the skills, knowledge, abilities that students will be able to demonstrate do it? rather than just know it, do it with that. Uh, and that's where there's a distinction. And that's what determines in CBE design, competence-based education design, you start with the outcome. And you probably have heard about backward design or uh, uh, process by Wigan, Grand Wigan. Um, that actually starts with outcomes and then moves right into 
the assessment. And then actually do you design actually the learning environment so that you can help students to be able to demonstrate those competencies. So those are the uh, some very fine distinction, um, but, uh, but in, as an instructional designer, CBE will help me to get it even more concrete with my alignment and make sure that no matter whether it's a faculty slash textbook driven curriculum or a competency based driven, that alignment is there. I think uh, I, I employ that uh, methodology um, in some of the things that I develop, um, especially the new stuff I'm developing. And um, it's really great because it keeps me as an instructional designer also uh, in check so that I'm not throwing everything in the kitchen sink at a learner and um, it, it becomes hyper focused on the specific elements that are most important um, in order to accomplish the objective of whatever that you know learning objective is. Yep, that's an excellent point. And absolutely, the CVE adds actually, it makes it more efficient. And, and there is actually a discussion uh, between, and there's lots of uh, skepticism um, by some faculty and by some other people in education academia, that competency-based education is not education, it's training. So, so where is that balance? Um, one, could, one could argue actually that, yeah, if you are defining very concrete competencies and you are assessing those with the, uh, with the authentic assessment, and then you are just teaching and designing just to help student get to that assessment. So you may be limiting it. You may be just focusing on that competency only. Uh, and then you may be missing actually other peripheral education that happens actually if they are not that confined. So that's a very valid argument. However, I see actually that competency-based education can help to, as Amanda said, take out the extra noise and help students to learn focus on their learning. However, the, the role of authentic assessment is that's where they are now doing a real world problem and real world project. And that's where they are applying multiple skills, multiple level of learning and thinking, as well as multiple uh, uh, areas of expertise. So they're not just doing one thing, or writing one paper or taking a, a multiple, multiple choice quiz, but they are actually doing a real project. And those of us working professionals, we know actually no matter what field you are in, when you are doing a project, it's not that you are only working on learning theory or you're only working on accounting. Even accounting, when you are having the spreadsheet or the budget, for example, you have to think from business perspective. You have to solve problem. You have to uh, look at multiple uh, stakeholders and talk with them. Communication is another skill. So you are applying multiple skills. And to me, that is education. That's training would be, can I actually move from point A to point B in most efficient way? And education is how actually well I'd go and, and work with cross-functional domains uh, in education. That's where the, the, the distinction is between training and, uh, and education and CB basically, competence-based education. So, so um, Kashif, so do you see CBE as um, aligned with, um, obviously I think that the example that you and Amanda were talking about, you know, seems to be a really good, um, way to uh, get to training and skills and, and proficiencies. And, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, my employees can uh, demonstrate at this threshold uh, to operate this particular equipment or this software um, before I put them, you know, interacting in the business. So, but from an academic perspective, you know, say a graduate program, an MBA, like Salil was talking about earlier, or, you know, um, you know, just, you know, higher education or even K-12, 
how does how would CBE align to those spaces as well? Um, is that where the controversy is at, or is it just misconceptions and semantics? And and I, I that's exactly where it is. It's it's the the when 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 faculty the uh, some faculty I should say or the the spec skeptics about CBE. What they are thinking actually is that we are teaching to the test. We are preparing students to be successful in the assessment. And what they forget actually is that this assessment is not a multiple choice assessment. It is actually a real world authentic assessment. And that's where actually the education is happening. It's, uh, it helps with the soft skills like problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, communication, all the soft skills, they are actually applied when you are doing uh, a, a real world authentic ass uh, assessment. And, and the definition of the competencies, that's where that's also become very critical to define those competencies in a way that they are not, they don't become tasks. Competence, competencies don't become tasks because then actually it becomes a training. If I, I say, uh, I draw these two lines or, or, or draw a table, um, that, is, that is a task. But a but, uh, 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 balanced budget in the table creating a budget that is actually an authentic assessment that includes multiple levels of learning, thinking, and demonstration of competencies. So at Rollins, thank you for that. So at Rollins, uh, we employed the AACU LEAP rubric um, with different, uh, different areas that are important for um, graduates, you know, college graduates. And I know you're very familiar with that. Um, I, and then we're running out of time here. I think I'm stealing all the, all the time here, but I guess uh, your thoughts on how the LEAP rubric and that sort of connection to uh, program and student learning outcomes um, and CBE could come together. Would, would CBE be more um, sub competencies that would then align to the, uh, the LEAP standards or how would you sort of conceptualize that for us? Yep. So, um, uh, the, the LEAP actually provides for general education, liberal arts. LEAP stands for Liberal uh, Arts for America Promise. That's an initiative uh, done by AACU, uh, American, um, uh, Association of American Colleges and Universities. Um, how, and, and they use actually authentic assessments they, they, the, the, the whole rubric actually they use, it is based on competency driven. It is competency based. So I, 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 I don't see any kind of uh, uh, distinction between competency based and uh, LEAP's uh, uh, rubric and LEAP's model. Uh, LEAP actually is very articulate. It's a great model for those of us who even, I would say we can use the same model for non-general education courses and curricula as well, because they provide a nice actually list of how to write competencies, uh, which are measurable and we all know about the smart competencies. Um, uh, how actually, what is the authentic assessment uh, is gonna be? What is a signature assessment? So when you are designing a competency-based program, the highest level is a program outcome. And from there, you have certain competencies that students achieve throughout their course. And those competencies are aligned to those program outcomes. As students demonstrate their mastery on those program outcomes, it is a signature assessment that needs to be threaded throughout the curriculum that demonstrate that, uh, that students have accomplished the program outcome. So there, there could be signature assessments throughout the courses and throughout the curriculum. Um, so that's, that's a, I am calling it a traditional competency-based education, but talking about the, the more uh, latest and more uh, 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 movement towards actually competency-based or application of competency-based education, 
is using um, uh, uh, badges, using actually uh, uh, some credentials that students can take from one place to another, from one job to another job, from one institution to another institution. Uh, again, it's very new uh, early on. It's, uh, it's mostly used currently in the training and corporate training in that industry. But sooner or later, this is gonna come actually into education uh, and, and higher ed, uh, where students actually would be able to uh, 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 chunk their, their demonstration of competencies and, and their different levels of skills that need to be developed. And they, once they have achieved that, they have attained a badge or a credential that actually will be with them throughout their academic journey. And then they can add, and, and one good example is College for America. They have that kind of model where it's 120 competencies, individual competencies, and students, they go in, they pick and choose their own competencies. Of course, there is a bucket, actually certain buckets that they have to choose from, but they have choices. And as they complete each competencies and demonstrate that successfully, they attain that and they, they get that and then move on to the next competency. So that's how actually it's coming out to be actually the, the next generation of uh, competence-based education uh, uh, application. Uh, and that's actually bridging the, uh, uh, and I had actually a, I can move to actually the slide actually real quick. Uh, I have this history, but I'm gonna. So um, with, with this CBE and an example I gave you about uh, College of America, College of America actually worked with corporations industry and try to find actually what are the what are the competencies that are needed to for a certain job and if they require an M MBA for that job that's how they will find their MBA competencies they work very closely with the corporate corporations and industry to define that and then the coursework or the the the, the competencies are written um, making sure that students, when they graduate, they have attained all those competencies and they have actually through authentic assessment. So when they actually graduate from that program, they are actually, they're all prepared to just go in the workforce and then just start working right away and uh, be more productive. Great. Um, so we're, we're going on about an hour and I'd love to, we've got about eight minutes until, uh, you know, we've uh, spent about an hour and uh, Dr. Azzi has been very gracious with his time tonight. Um, are there any burning questions that Salil has that uh, C. Castro has or Amanda has that, that you'd love to sort of ask the expert now since we have him in the hot seat? And uh, you all are mu muted. I, uh, oh, Salil? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, this has certainly piqued my interest about, you know, what's going on in this area. And I feel like there's a lot more that I can learn here, right, about uh, how is the learning done, like, throughout the semester, or how do you design these projects? How do you assess? Uh, do you have any resources, Dr. Kashif, that you recommend that, you know, I can read up on or blogs that I can feels like this is never going to be enough time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, so I can actually uh, provide that um, uh, to Jeff and I think you can, uh, is there a way actually, uh, Jeff, to connect with Salil? Sure, absolutely. So Salil, you're on the Dallas Learning Technologies Meetup. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get um, all that great information and resources from Dr. Ozdi and yeah. I will post that. Awesome. Um, and there, and I will also post it in the Rollins College uh, Instructional Design Certificate yeah. WordPress as well. And and just on the top, of, uh, just CBE uh, Network. There, there is actually a very good site uh, that provides actually lots of information about this. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and yeah, there are there are journals actually uh, about uh, competency-based education, um, uh, and and it's I I believe actually 
that and 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 I'm going to just go to uh, the history if you can see that history uh, it's going to actually right here it's it's uh, more than almost like 100 years 90 90 plus years that cbe has been there it started in like 20s and 40s with uh, with military training with an instructional designer and then actually in 65 there was this bill passed an act higher education act which started making investing more into learning uh, uh, and and help adult learners and if you can see that um, it has been there and you mentioned Jeff about AACU's leap initiative that's there in 2005 which was after the reauthorization of HEA uh, higher education uh, act um, and and if you can see that there there is the uh, southern New Hampshire in 2013 they actually were given the first direct assessment uh, 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 approval by Department of Education. So the purpose actually of this actually is, I see that the foundation of or the the, the framework for CBE has been there for for years. The concept of competency that we want education, we want to educate our students. Um, to be competent in certain skills, knowledge, abilities. This thing actually is going to evolve actually further. Uh, the framework will be the same, but application, as we talked about badges, it's going to, the future of education I see, it's going to be um, very modularized. It's like I have actually like 150 competencies in front of me, and I am an adult. I actually want either I'm interested in learning more about just like Salil you are, or uh, I'm actually, I want to get promotion at my work or I'm a lane changer. All three examples, I will actually know actually what I, I need to attain, whether it's my own learning, my promotion at work, or a completely lane changing, I'm, I want to be a nurse. Uh, I would actually have an option to see what already I have uh, in last 25 plus years of my experience, what I can knock down already, and then whatever is left, that's what I have to accomplish and demonstrate. So that's the future actually is gonna be, and, uh, and Department of Education I think is, uh, has been pretty supportive up until last year, We'll see how it goes actually for for in, in coming coming years, uh, but I think it's that's a future. And if you see the LinkedIn's and other other social media, there are lots of those kind of badges and recognitions, and you can actually have your online presence, and that is through these competencies. You can show that I can do it, and that's what employers want to do. Or want to see, uh, they want to see actually what can you do, not what you know about. What can you do for them when you join their company? Uh, and, and it's not only for the business or company, it's for our, our social uh, setup as well. And I'm huge actually uh, into that this competency-based education is not only learning about skills at work, it's about society as well. How, what are the different skills, knowledge, abilities we need to learn and hone on uh, to be a better citizen? to apply uh, 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 better ethical practices uh, in real life, uh, real world setting. So those are also part of this uh, competency-based education. Wonderful. <laughs> Love how you, how you raised it, Cash. Uh, thank you, Leo, for your question. And uh, that was great. That was great kind of capstone on tonight. Um, any other final burning questions that other folks may have, C. Castro or Amanda, for for our expert in CBE tonight. Well, um, I have one, and of course, and at the end, I'd love to thank thank you so much, uh, Kasha, for you know, hanging out with us tonight and really having this wonderful, nuanced discussion around CBE. Because you hear about CBE in different uh, perspectives, um, and thank you, C. Castro, for the comment. Um, and then some folks have, you know. Pr um, dispositions in terms of oh it's it's really training like you said or it's lowbrow it's not real learning and then some folks 
may come at it from the opposite perspective. This is a learning orientation. This is an authentic assessment orientation. This is what you can do, not what you not not the abstraction or you know what you say you can do, you know, or not a degree. You know, so I guess as you as you look into the future um, with your crystal ball, Kashif, what do you see in terms of uh, industries or sectors in training and education um, being quick to adopt or um, create models that are very effective? Is it going to happen in um, uh, training and workplace education? Um, the lynda.com being bought by LinkedIn example that you shared. Is it going to happen in higher education where um, they've been very uh, quick to adopt, um, relatively quick to adopt new modalities online and blended learning? Or is it going to happen in the K-12 space where there's so much change and so much at stake and there's a lot of new models that are kind of bubbling up? Where do you see it sort of taking, you know, taking up the quickest and as you look into your crystal ball? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's an excellent uh, question. And uh, um, the future I see, we, we have passed, we went through industrial revolution and, and we had the, the printing press. And, and our printing press is internet. What that it did actually to us is it provided information. There's abundant of uh, uh, information out there. You can Google almost anything. You can watch on, uh, on YouTube. You can learn to do almost anything now. Um, the future actually of education is going to be how actually you use this information and package it and how we actually package this information to solve problems. Because there will be uh, 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 individual packets of information all over. But how actually in your real life, how you solve the problem by combining that information, not memorizing that, but how to collect, analyze, and put it together, synthesizes, and then that apply, apply to the real world situation. So that's going to be the part of our daily kind of life. And, and lots of data is out there and, and, and data analytics, big data, and um, that is all out, out there. Where, uh, where we, we want to do is the education I, I see actually the, the area, it would be the corporation, the training area. I think they were gonna, they're gonna latch on the, to this first. And somewhat actually higher ed may take it on as well. K-12 is very good actually about adopting technology, new technology, but changing the paradigm at K-12, I, I, I see it's gonna take some time. Uh, and and whoever does it, I think they they will be the pioneer, and of course they will be uh, ahead of the game. But I I I see actually that's the sequence uh, to answer your question that the corporate training actually business they're going to be first, uh, and then higher ed, and then actually K twelve to apply this kind of new methodology. Wise perspective and uh, wise words from Kashif Azdi. Uh, I think Amanda has a question. And then we'll end that for tonight, unless Seacaster has a final, final question. Go ahead, Amanda. Oh, I don't. I just want to thank you for, uh, for the session. It's been very informative. Absolutely. So it sounds like Amanda, um, and I don't know what, what background you have, Seacaster, but it sounds like, uh, Amanda, according to Dr. Osdi, you're going to be the one in the forefront, you know, in corporate training. So yeah. You so you. So update us. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks everybody uh, for coming. It was wonderful. It was a great discussion. We've gone over a little bit and I'm really, really pleased with the interactivity and the discussion that we have. And Salil um, had to drop off and thanks for uh, C. Castro, Salil and Amanda for coming. And of course, our folks who will watch this asynchronously, we're going to link comments to it via the blog uh, and, and uh, Kashif, Dr. Kashif Ozdi, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and for you know, really creating a wonderful learning and, and thinking experience for us. So this was probably one of the best uh, webinars we've had with the Dallas Learning Technology Meetup Group. And of course, we've merged it now with um, our Rollins College Instructional Design Program as well. So this has been a wonderful night. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, Thanks. Jeff. And thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everyone.
Take care now. Right, bye. Thank you. Thank you.